Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. If you guys haven't noticed already from the title, the theme of this video is EOS. And I know, plenty of games have been shutting down left and right, up and down. So in this video, hopefully I'll be able to summarize throughout all the games that as far as I know, there might be more, alright? Feel free to add more in the comment section below if I miss any. But yeah, figured I'll just talk about the couple of titles that have been experiencing shutdown or announcing shutdown throughout the couple of days until today. So let's talk about it. Now, first things first, uh, why are a lot of games shutting down now? So if you guys are not aware, a lot of company, their quarterly earnings are reported this year. They call it the fiscal month or something. And usually at the beginning of somewhere around March or April is where a lot of companies re-evaluate their investments. All right. And these games, whether you like it or not, it could be your favorite game for sure. But at the end of the day, it has to make money. So that's how company decides, okay, maybe it's time to close down this game, uh, move on to a different project that could earn us more money. Uh, and that's how most company operates, whether you like it or not. So with that being said, let's talk about a couple of these. Now, Hyperfront, this one surprises me. Uh, I've been following this game a little bit as well. Uh, it's apparently a Valorant clone. I'm not too familiar with this. This is not really a, a gacha game, but more like a shooting game, uh, similar to Valorant. But you can see there's a lot of speculation that perhaps uh, the Riot lawsuit could be the one that's causing this game to shut down. Nothing to do with the earnings whatsoever. Now, as you can see, this game is developed by China's NetEast Games. But yeah, it's been a year and recently it's announcing shutdown. So very, very interesting. Now, let's move on to gachas because that's what I'm much more familiar with. Now, first things first, Seven Nights. If you guys are not aware, Seven Nights has a couple of uh, different ones. This is Seven Nights, the, the first one. There's also Seven Nights 2 but I've never played that one. So Seven Nights, this is the first one, Seven Nights 1 or just Seven Nights. As you can see, it's about to end the game service on May 9th. So it's been a long time. It's been almost eight years. They have been around for a while. Apparently Seven Nights 2 wasn't a replacement, but there's been some talk about this game that there's been a resurgence of a new Seven Nights might be, you know, replacing these Seven Nights. I've heard a lot of good things about this game and a lot of players' first gacha might be Seven Nights actually. It's either Seven Nights, Summoner's War, or Brave Frontier. Like those three are quite in line with being a very, very old title that's one of the main gacha titles back then. I mean, alongside with King's Raid perhaps, right? So, which is kind of interesting. As you can see, finally, it's coming to a close. Uh, they'll be shutting down roughly around May. Now, Exos Heroes. This one, I really want to talk about a little bit more because I'm really surprised with how the, the game just went for... Uh, the last time I heard about this game was they tried to... A change everything. The entire system was changed. The entire game was going through this NFT phase or they were trying to introduce some blockchain into the game. But apparently players didn't like that because uh, I know with when you introduce blockchain with the game, you sort of have to recalibrate or change certain structure or certain system uh, depending on how you, how you implement it. So Brave9 has a much different approach to this where they just put it in an entirely different server. So it doesn't affect the current server. So they open up a new server where the NFT or the token takes place, right? So I'm not sure about Exos Heroes. I heard that they try to change the entire system and everyone wasn't happy with this because they already put a lot of investments. So imagine having to like reinvest or rebuild your character or a lot of your character skills are like modified completely. So you have a fully built character that now suddenly is no longer, you know, meta, no longer strong. And that just messes everything up. But you sort of have to if you change the entire game into an NFT game or else the market will just crash because everyone has already gotten all the meta characters uh, ETC, right? Yeah, that's something that based upon what I've heard, it eventually leads to shutdown. A lot of whales left the game, uh, no one else to support the game. Uh, if your whales leave the game, that's how you usually dies. Next up is Girl Cafe Gun. I'm sure you guys have heard this already. Uh, previously, they have announced this, that they are not going to post any more updates. Now, they say they will permanently shut down its game server. And apparently, uh, this time, 
we have a couple of weeks ahead uh, before the announcement uh, they'll be shutting it down on May so as you can see yep it's finally confirmed Girl Cafe Gun by Billy Billy so Billy Billy is also running Artillery Gear it's going to be um <laughs> very interesting to see if Artillery Gear will be able to survive you know any of these uh, as far as I know it's probably one of the bottom in terms of the earnings, in terms of the profit overall. But yeah, uh, I do think Billy Billy has a lot of better titles coming out soon. Uh, they are, Higan is coming out in a couple of days, right? So definitely uh, plenty of projects, plenty of games that they perhaps could pour their investments into. So I don't see why they would maintain something like Girl Cafe Gun. Okay, so Love Life School Idol Festivals. Uh, this is something that I'm not personally familiar with, but apparently ending its service for almost 10 years of uptimes. Yeah, even JP Games... A lot of them are getting shut down. Uh, a lot of players seem to think that it's only the global games. No, there's a lot of JP exclusive games and this is one of it that is uh, announcing the shutdown alongside with Sakura Ignoramus. This game, wow, this is insane, all right? Shut down after just one month of release. I was not expecting this. Uh, if you guys are not aware, they even provide you with a refund process, which is surprising. This is also uh, happening in JP. So apparently this particular title was brought uh, by Jun Imaizumi, who previously worked on mobile titles such as uh, Phantom of the Kill and Alchemist Code. But yeah, this is like kind of crazy. Apparently there's only six characters. And let's show you guys a little bit of the gameplay of this game. This is probably the record of the fastest shutdown ever. So I've never seen a game shut down within like one month. Uh, which is insane and that's happening in the JP server side as well. Uh, very, very shocking for sure. Alright, Revive Witch, I've already made a dedicated video for this. Uh, hopefully, I don't need to go too much in depth. But yeah, unfortunate. But this is going to be your star's first EOS and hopefully, you know, players try to be more critical that even if the publisher has good image, it can't save your game. Alright, if the game is not good, the game is just not good. Alright, there's nothing much that you can do uh, no matter how good the image of the publishers Ah, so something to always keep in mind as players. Super String, something that of course, uh, if you guys haven't heard, I don't think I've ever actually make a video of this, but I've definitely played it on stream. A pretty fun game, but yeah, not surprised that it shut down. It's more of a chill, uh, turn-based game using the Unreal Engine, but it has nothing unique going on for it other than it being too or extremely generous. Now that the life spirit pledge, of course, end of service. Uh, this is not surprising in my honest opinion. Uh, the game doesn't have anything uh, extraordinary as well. Uh, as far as I know, not many players do play this title. Uh, obviously, I think this is much more uh, very, very anticipated, right? Tales of Asteria end service around nine years. Pretty cool. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is also a JP exclusive title. Uh, after nine years, it decided to shut down the game. Now, if you guys are familiar with the Tales series, uh, you will have heard of any of the Tales games. They are really famous usually in the JP side of things. But yeah, this actually caught me by surprise. Uh, very, very surprising. But to be fair, it's been around for nine years. I think it just can't stand the test of time. So eventually, shut down. So Yu-Gi-Oh! does have a game that shuts down as well called the Cross Duel. Obviously, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is probably the most famous one. This could be one of the main reasons why it's shutting down. That is a mobile port only, so you can't uh, cross-play with other players on PC or whatsoever, unlike Master Duel, right? And also, it's not optimized. I don't think there's any reason for a game like Yu-Gi-Oh! with this kind of graphics, right? Uh, it's just... It's just a card game. Why does it need to be like overheating your phone? So that's definitely, it's just, there's just no excuse for it to be overheating any device. I mean, depending on how old your phones are, but the Idol Master Side M. Now this one is really interesting. I saw the live stream earlier today. Uh, let me show you guys. As you can see, they actually make a live stream announcing the shutdown. And I was watching the stream. It was pretty wholesome. Um, let's show you guys a little bit. That is very, very wholesome. All right, so the developers or the person in charge actually came out and be like, okay, so I'm really, really sorry, uh, you know, that they weren't able to provide. I think this is the guy in charge. Uh, uh, so he even said that it's his responsibility, which I give him full respect, alright, for coming out and say, okay, this game shuts down, it's my fault. 
really, really sorry for that. And yeah, I've never seen any other company that does that. A lot of the Japanese developers definitely yeah, that's working on the title. Uh, you can see it's very, very wholesome. Uh, even everybody in the chat. Um, yeah. So they were very, very sad as well. And of course, the latest one, Knight's Chronicle. So if you guys haven't heard it already, Net Marble is shutting down Knight's Chronicle finally. Uh, this game has been around for I think at least five years. I can't remember. All right, don't quote me on that. But definitely quite surprised. Ending its game on July 4th. As you can see, a service and schedule right there and download block schedule, a payment block schedule, ETC. I believe back then there was quite a lot of drama involving this game or revolving this game with the costume gate where it started introducing pay to win costume with stats and that caused a lot of players to, you know, to not like the game or leave the game even. So yeah, those are all the major shutdowns of the recent month. Oh, and of course, Princess Connect that I've already made a dedicated video about. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it in the description below. So definitely, lots of games are shutting down. What do you guys think? All right, so I'm curious if you guys are worried. Are any games that you guys playing making below two to 300K? So that is going to be within the shutdown territory, something to keep watching out for. And definitely when that happens, there's nothing that we can do as players, unfortunately. All right, you can do petition as much as you want, but if companies decide to remove the project completely, there's only so much players can do. But hey, uh, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. As always, subscribe, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the next shutdown. Hopefully not shutdown. Hopefully new game videos. All right, have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>